So in this video, I want to show how our Celsify uh, connector works and what it does. In Celsify, uh, you have products and those products have different fields. And the idea is to be able to connect uh, Celsify to SmartCat so that you can automatically translate fields uh, in products. Uh, and in Celsify, there's a way to specify that certain fields are localizable and certain fields are not. So how to do this, uh, how this process would work in SmartCat. If you go here uh, and start uh, creating a new integration, uh, what you need to do in the first step is to provide your Celsify organization ID and Celsify API key. So I'll pass them here. And with this, we'll be uh, creating integration, trying to connect to Celsify instance. Once we gather the information, we'll be also gathering the languages, source and target languages that uh, we have in this space in Celsify. And here we'll provide the list uh, only of those languages that are enabled in Celsify. So here we'll use uh, English as a source language and we'll be translating this into French and German. And we'll use machine translation plus post editing step. Once we have that, uh, we also give you an ability to specify uh, which uh, filters, so which subset of products to localize. And for that, I created a special field called localized through SmartCat, which is a binary, binary yes or no. And uh, we can filter through that and only send for localization um, products that have this field uh, turned on. So since it's a um, Boolean field, I'll provide uh, the value of true. And this is how it looks back here. So localized through SmartCat, yes. This is the field that we'll be using as a filter. Now we can also specify the list of properties that we will uh, be localizing. So here I will be localizing name and short description, for example, or we can select all of them. Once we add this filter here as well, we can create an integration. Now we will be gathering all the products that match certain filter. And also we'll be gathering existing uh, source text uh, and translations for them. And once this uh, uh, step is done, we'll be presenting you a list of, uh, uh, a list of segments that and content that we will be uh, importing in this step. So in that sense, you can continue translating through SmartCat uh, some of the properties that uh, and some some objects in Celsify uh, that were already translated before. Let's wait for a few seconds, a few more seconds, and uh, we'll be getting that next step. So here we're showing that we have some, uh, some content to import for all of those locales. And if we click uh, on those, um, those buttons, we will show you uh, the alignment basically report. So for German, there are no translations. And for French, let's see, for French, we have some of the translations. So we'll be uh, importing them. And I will press import. And with that, we will be finalizing the integration, uh, the creation of that uh, special project that is connected to Celsify. Once that uh, integration is set up, we will be uh, essentially having this first, uh, well, uh, the number of files uh, based on the number of target languages and the number of uh, products. So here, 
based on the filter, we selected both products that we had in Salsify and they are available for all of those. Uh, each of them are available for uh, German and French. Now we can have a look and see uh, how they are looking in the, in the cat editor. So you can see that we did the pre-translate here because we enabled uh, machine translation as a first step and we can uh, confirm those edits. Also, if we go into French version, we should see those uh, pre-translations that were coming from Salsify. So here we'll be uh, approving them on both translation stage and on post editing stage. And again, we have all of those translations here in place. So once we do that, we can push translations back. If we go to integrations tab, into settings and enable this mode that allows you to push translations back, uh, then I will be ready to uh, synchronize my, uh, my content back into Salsify. So this will take about a minute. And after that's done, uh, we'll go back into Salsify and see the result of, of that push. Okay, we're done. Now let's go back to Salsify. And now if we switch here in this object, for example, from English to German, we can see that we have translations for both name and short description as overrides for this locale. We can also go back into French and see how that looks like. Previously, during my tests, I also translated long description, HTML, and it was localized as well. Here we have uh, name and short description as well. Let's go into some other product and see the translations there. So here's the original um, English version of that object and all of the properties. And if I select German, Again, I will see the translations appearing for those fields. With filters, uh, when you are setting up an integration, you can specify like very precise filters. For example, you can specify uh, the identifier to be exactly like that. And with that, you will be translating just one, uh, one object, basically, one product description. Or you can specify something like, uh, special filter that we added here. And with this, you can control and translate many projects, many, many, many product descriptions at once. So this allows you to easily set up integration once and basically control what needs to be sent for translation right from Salsify UI. Uh, 